Hey, Jerome. Hey, hey there. Hey there. How's Blessings, you? family. I've been enjoying y'all's conversation. Enjoying y'all's conversation here. Yeah. Thank you. Always so that, um, enjoy connecting with both of you. It's always a blessing. Yeah. We're doing a three three days fast, Jerome? Three days? Fast. Yeah, right now. We're uh, from the 24th to the 27th. Yeah. So today, if you want to jump on, it started today. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. 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 Whatever you want to fast from. I love when you say Buddha. <laughs> he makes me always laugh. <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if you have joined the app, the circle app, where we fast together. You can see everybody, the whole family fasting in there. Oh, cool. Neat. So are you doing a, a natural state dry fast or? It's uh, your choice. Yeah, it's, it's your choice. It's That's your cool. choice, yeah, but, uh, mm -hmm. but but it's on the app. It's called the Life app. The Life app. It's a fasting okay. app. Yeah, I thought it was circle. Okay. <laughs> <It's a circle. laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, you see, I'm not good at those things. <laughs> but yeah, I'm part of the fast. Everywhere where it's a fast, I'm in. You know, I'm in. <laughs> but uh, yeah. all fasts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wanted to. Do natural but then i was natural for a couple of days already yeah i mean this is one of those things that i came up against you know because i was like i'm gonna do two days a week you know and at first it came easily and i felt so good and i was like oh yeah this is good we're going and that's the thing is you kind of get stoked about it and you just have to deal with the reality sometimes i've dealt with, came up with like the reality it's hot as heck right now it's like it's 95 in the shade right now outside mm -hmm been between like 95 and 100 you know for the past couple of weeks working out in it and stuff and you just get parched and you just really want want to like you know make that tickle go away in your throat you know but mm. it is a stimulation and it is like it's that whole thing of like I, I i know i can go farther but there's pushing the body and then there's pushing the consciousness and then when you're pushing both then, then you know you, you're gonna run into trouble. You just feel it. You know, you're just like, okay, yep, yeah, can't. You know, what the so, mind can do, right? Just honoring it, just where you are, you know, and not not trying to make it something it isn't. Yeah. You know. So, so. I think consistency is is a great mm -hmm. uh, way to start fasting. Like, yeah. you just like one day out of the week don't make it into a mission but just make it into like a habit it's like you're brushing your teeth you know well, that's, day, that's where I lean back on what i've been doing and just you know it's perfectly great doing a 23 hour dry fast a day and every day and just juicing mm -hmm. primarily I, you know it's i could do that honestly for the rest of my life happily if i never you know advance to level four breatharianism or whatever that's fine i you know but uh, but it's been exciting. It sounds exciting. It sounds fun. It sounds fun to like have nothing yeah. that I gotta like have to mess with except for fun all day. Yeah. <laughs> like Ellie Tom does, hiking around the world. I'd love to do that. Just like meet all the cool people, go see pyramids, all that kind of thing. You can. You know. I know. Yeah. I can and I will. And you guys will be there together. It'll be fun. Yeah, we can go there right now. There's nothing stopping us but ourselves, to be honest. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's what um, that's what being around Ellie Tom really taught me. You know, one of the things that it taught me just being around him was that what Nabiha just said, like, what's stopping you? You know, what is actually stopping you? Like when I just witnessed him, just the way he operates and his, you know, the things that he's just so unconcerned, you know, mm -hmm. he was like, I think he said, uh, <laughs> one day he was like, um, you know, he was talking about the, the supernatural, you know, like the city powers, you know, how he, he downplays it. He, he brings it down to earth Make and he's like, food freedom is a minor, minor city power. He's like, this is, you know, 
compared to all the things that we actually can do as human beings, this is minor, mm -hmm. you know, being without, this is really on a low level. And I remember he said, uh, and then one, one moment he actually admitted, he was like, well, well, it is kind of supernatural, you know, like I'm, you know, I'm sitting around all these people eating, they're looking at me, I'm just sitting there and I'm sitting there looking at them, you know, mm -hmm. he's like, yeah, you know, sometimes it does feel supernatural, like you feel kind of out of place from, from the rest of society, they're all doing something you're not doing. Yeah. And they're just kind of looking at you just like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for bringing, that up. Thanks for bringing that up. Bleeding. Like it's like my system's like blocked. <laughs> like that on you, you can be eating. I don't even know. Like I know you're doing an activity or something, but it's kind of like blocked. It's just not my world, mm. you know? Somehow it's, they just doing whatever. Yeah. That's, that's... I've gotten used to it you know i sit down with my family you know or we have classes and stuff and everybody sits down and breaks out their food and they're always offering me stuff and you just get used to be like no thanks you know you know you have to tell them like oh i'm a breatharian you know or like no. you know anything like that you just, just be like i'm fasting or no thank you or you know and it just becomes like normal mm -hmm. it's normal and natural and um you know i like what you said there Jerome, because that was something I was asking Nabiha is like this feeling sort of, it's almost like being like an alien because <laughs> you're there, you know, and this thing that connect, it's, you know, a super, I think food is a very connective, beautiful relationship and experience. But, you know, this thing of food freedom to not have to eat, you know, and to not be addicted the way most people are addicted to food and they eat to live and they eat to die, you know. So um, that liberation, just as you said, brother, you know, of uh, like the lightness that Ellie Tom carries around with him. This, this has been something I've been chasing since I got involved with just sun gazing, meditating and raw food. I think enlightenment is literally like turning the body into light, mm. you know, and um, the minor city powers supposedly we can walk through walls, we can bilocate, we can fly, mm. we can do uh, rainbow body tra transformations. We can, you know, there's so much untapped within us yeah. that if we just focus, that's what really is juicy to me is I want to focus on that all the time. <laughs> now, um, yeah, you're about to yeah, uh, by, by all the other, you know, I mean, you kind of got to do the, the three, the five D, eight D, eleven D, whatever is rooted in the three D. So you got to be with those material three D, you know, aspects. But even yeah. still, yeah, I mean, Jesse, as you were talking, you reminded me of the X Men. You know, the X Men, the mutant. They call them mutants in the X Men world. You know, the X Men Academy. They're they're labeled as mutants. And their their superhuman abilities are labeled as mutations, and so Kitty Pride, she's the one that can phase through walls. She can walk through walls and solid objects, and they call it phasing. And if she holds somebody's hand, they can walk through the wall together. You know, they can go together. She can actually bring you through the wall. And then there's people like Nightcrawler. He can teleport. You know, Jean Grey and and. Charles Xavier, he they got the telepathy and Jean, you know, Gray, also Jean Grey is the protector of the M Cron crystal. She protects the whole universe. She's like the Phoenix, you know. The Phoenix, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, and uh, and and then there's Professor X, you know, of course, with his, you know, psychic power. We're all psychic, and I think we've gated out our psychic power because of the pain of feeling the collective pain, you mm -hmm. know, and um. I, that's where I really embrace like the Buddhist philosophies and stuff like Tong Len. Like if you're going through pain, embrace it and try to feel it for all beings. Like, you know, if every being, is, if, if beings have to suffer, this suffering that I'm going through now, let me do it in some way on behalf of them, for them, so that they don't have as much, you know. And um, I think that's you know the way to our liberation is through these things you know of like honoring our our abilities our our hearts um mission desire wanting um or just like nabiha was saying just their joy you know if you can you know bring be that source of joyfulness in yourself you're 
making the world more joyful, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, to spread that around and uplift other beings. Brother, I got to like commend you and give respect and praise to you because I see you do this <laughs> every day. Every day I'm waking up and you, you're already done alive and you're doing Qigong, you know, <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, you know, like just, <laughs> just med meditating and starting to wake up and start my day, you know, and uh, like you show up for the community uh, tirelessly, consistently, yeah. every day every day it's amazing so great work brother oh, great work thank you thank you i appreciate that i received that yes thank you Tom. yeah thank and you too nabiha you're out there like i see you on the telegram group feel, fielding everybody and mm -hmm. kind of mama and doing the mama job mama <laughs> hen you know like keep everybody on that, you know, i'm supposed to be on the meditation right now but together you know, and <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah. So give them to you too. Yeah, yeah, Jesse, you said uh you said you're wiping your eyes when I'm doing Qigong. Nabiha wakes up earlier than me. Yeah. So she she wakes up at four forty four, right? <laughs> <laughs> she doing the meditation nice and early, you know. Before Man. the roosters. Before when the I first, roosters crow. When I first switched to the twenty three hour dry fast, I only needed to sleep for about four hours a night. And it was great because I could meditate for like three hours every day. And I was like, oh, it was so good. But with all that energetic outpouring I'm doing with landscaping and gardening now, I'm finding myself sleeping like seven hours, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So made it. It's all, but, all about, you know, this you were talking about being lighter. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and this journey is more about subtracting than adding, really. Mm -hmm. So less less uh, ideas that you wrapped around yourself by concepts, uh, less food, and find like, like enjoyment in different things than stuffing yourself, like making yourself heavy, you know? Right. So you can mentally, physically, spiritually make yourself heavy, and you can do the things that you are designed to do then, you know? Like Jerome, you were saying all of these abilities, like they, I believe leave them because you were just telling us about the abilities and all of that came from a human mind you know you can only put down whatever that's possible whatever you can imagine is already an image right so it exists so teleportation and uh, telepathy all of that exists otherwise we wouldn't even be talking about it right now there's something you know what the this we can't talk about it even we can't imagine it because it's not it's not possible, right? So just being lighter, not even like having a mission with an idea, whatever breath area, whatever that's going on, all of that, just let go. What is it that brings you joy, you know? And let everything else that's heavy just fall off and just enjoy the ride, really. Yeah. That's, that's what it is about, yeah. I agree. It's like, it's more like I notice in myself, uh, I c create the sense of hunger through worry, you know, mm. or you know i'm like you know i i gotta get to this job site by this to get this done and i have to have these materials and um i gotta have this much money by the end of the day for my son jeremy so i can send him that on third you know and you start to you know like they i think it might have been lao tzu who said you know if you're anxious you're in the future if you're depressed you're in the past and if you're happy it's because you're in the present you know and sure. it's easy to know, but hard to do in the context of the system, you know. And so this is the mastery I think we're all charged to, like every human being on the planet is learning how to do this. Like we've done that mastery in the caves in the Himalayas and learned to like, you know, bend time and teleport and all that stuff. Now we got to learn to do that in the context, like Seven yeah. Bomar talks about like, it's kind of like trying to refuel in the middle of a dog fight, right? You know, um, so if chaos is going on, you know, things are blowing up, you're trying to stay alive, but at the same time, you got to refuel with the plane. And that happens in war, you know. Um, people yeah. got to do that. And people can do that. That's kind of life, hard. you know. Yeah. That's life, right? Balance. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have to tame the mind by using the mind, right? How do mm -hmm. you do that? You, you got to find that balance, right? 
So it's not like you can't neglect the matrix. You have to find the balance between both. So you exactly. can teleport in the matrix. But you have to find that balance. You have to let go of the density of the matrix and find the flow, right? So unless you find balance on this planet, nothing is going to work. Mm -hmm. It's up and down. It's left and right. Everything is the opposite, you know? Mm -hmm. So only when you find the balance between both, that's where the magic happens. So it's not like leaning on this way or that way. So how can we balance walk in, this reality? How yeah, do you how, how walk, do you walk in balance day yeah. by day, every minute? You know, how do we maintain that balance? And I it's think possible, you know, I think easy. it's I think it's totally possible. I think it's one of the hardest things we can do, but I think it's the most powerful thing we can do to change the world. You know, yeah. is this yeah, trans transformation and learning to listen deeply to ourselves, to our innermost, you know, being mm. um, and trust it, you know, to tr yeah. trust it. So. If you just imagine there is no world to save, you just got to be, be responsible and have fun. Be responsible for, you know, your action, like your intentions, how you participate in this reality, how you wake up every day. And, you know, you're part of this reality, right? So how do you contribute? If you're just responsible for that, really, I think that's enough to save the world. You don't have to do anything extra. You don't have to do anything outside yeah. of yourself. No, I just think like people complicate it. I think people complicate enlightenment and well-being and everything way too much. And there's, you know, mm -hmm. money to be made and all these kinds of things. And that, you know, really, you, you know what makes you happy. You know exactly what makes you happy. You know, mm -hmm. and just just giving yourself and that was another thing jerome last time we were together with ellie tom and he was he did a whole download on just giving yourself permission mm -hmm. so that includes giving yourself permission to you know go on a crazy fast giving yourself permission at the end of the fast to have some food you know uh, um giving yourself permission to step away from a job that has supported you you know but you, you're called to do something else. That's where I'm at right now. Mm. Giving my permission, you know, being like, yeah, it's okay. It's it's okay, you know. Yeah. Um, you shouldn't be restricting yourself at all. Yeah. Just. And and that is a huge thing that I think, as we represent sort of the conic product community, um, a huge thing to put forth is that this is not about being restrictive. The pranic life is about a juicy life, about mm -hmm. a meaningful fulfilling vibrant you know uh incredible life you know yeah. meaningful yeah, yeah. You know, so. it's just, it just is. being like you know, when we were together right like I, I couldn't think of like okay is this something that other people are doing that i'm not doing like i didn't feel i don't feel like i'm lacking anything that other people are doing you know it's just like wake up you just be you you know and that's it everybody yeah. else is just doing them so it's not even like a mission it's not like okay i'm, I'm on this path and this is what i'm gonna do it's just like i wake up this is me you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah nabiha really is like a hummingbird you know <laughs> i remember i remember she she made this comparison and it's so true like if you're around her for enough enough time you'll see it like how the hummingbird just comes to the, you know, to the nectar, and just sips a little, yeah. yeah, it just sips a little bit and then it's off, you know, just a, sips a little bit and then it's off and it has so much energy, you know, the wings are fluttering so fast, you can't see them, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's just amazing. And so being around the Bia is like that, like she just comes and she sips a little bit, she's gone, you know, mm -hmm. I never once saw her like uh, afraid of, of not having enough like or, or chugging something or, or guzzling something or gargling it was never that it was just she would pick up something and put it down she would yeah. pick up something and put it down you know yeah. it was it was never a worry me. yeah <laughs> that's not me i do i have like my hour where i just like i have like a gallon of liquids right. you know and i just sit there and i just feast yeah. you know but we all have i think that's another important point to make is we all have our own way to prana mm -hmm. that we're all this is something we're all naturally going toward anyway but right. we all have you know our own diet our own you know 
spiritual it's all mind, you know? yeah it's, it's all in the mind so if if you if you really feel to me when i'm when i'm sleeping and stuff i just you know it's it's just a way it's a habit that i do but it's not that i feel i need to consume it you know so if i was consuming maybe i would be you know jogging it or drinking fast or something like that because of now i want to feel something but it's just that throughout my whole life i wanted to just be normal you know and in order for me to be normal you know that's that's the best i can do yeah <laughs> I can live here and there but um and i think you know like i said it's just that i wasn't programmed this is a program this is a learned habit mm -hmm. you know to eat it's mm -hmm. like it's, it's a habit it's kind of like a, a monster within yourself that you just train and train and train and train it gets bigger and bigger uh, the, the older you get right so mine maybe stayed as a baby or something like that. It never grew up because there, I had nobody training it, you know, nobody telling me you have to eat and, and food is important or like I didn't have like someone that would take me to McDonald's or, or this and that or all of that programming I didn't have, right? So maybe yeah. whatever beast that was activated in many people wasn't activated within me somehow, you know? Yeah, so, I was taught uh, that I couldn't leave the table until I cleared my plate. You know, I wasn't programmed like that. Yeah. So, I, I, and I see the differences between many people and me. It's just that how we were programmed. Because mm -hmm. I, I grew up on my own, and when I, when I see people that you know orphans or people that actually grew up on the street or something like that on their own, they don't, they don't care for food. Food is the mm -hmm. last thing that they think about. You know, they, they really don't care about it. So it's not like they're addicted to the food. It's more like you know they have to develop different survival skills than you know, being full and we didn't even have like place to sleep and how to find a place to sleep tonight. So your first thing is not like food, right? Or full belly or like, you know, cozy or whatever. So I think it's just that, that many people were programmed by their parents to be food mm -hmm. addicts. Oh, yeah. and, the, and the TV and you know, the advertisements, like I can still probably sing you some, uh, you know, commercials from the 80s and the 90s, you know. Uh, from all the, you know the inculcation that we get in that way you know um and uh it's it's interesting because it makes me think of, uh, uh, just about my studies with permaculture and foraging and stuff like that and you know indigenous people uh children can forage for like 75 percent of their needs by the time they're five you know mm. uh, so i don't think it's I don't think it's natural essentially to be thinking, you know, if you're living as a natural person, there's all this food around you all the time, you know? So you're not really, you're not thinking, it's not natural to be thinking about food all the time. And if you look at our culture, everything we do from going to work, you know, and then you, uh, you know, you eat three meals a day, you know, if you're gonna do something with, a, you know, for a date or for a family function, you're gonna go eat. It's always just around eating and then cleaning and you know looking up recipes and you know it just consumes so much time and thought and then the physical energy, as you guys know, on your body to like be digesting all of that all the time, mm. you know. And um, it, it, I think it's part of sort of the programming that's uh, put forth to keep us as uh, also, the whole thing with fasting and everything, you know, it creates brain-derived nerve growth factors and stuff. Like, you literally get more intelligent. You become more brilliant, you know. Um, and being heavy with food and all these toxic foods and meat and, you know, shakes and all this, you know. And then you put on top of that this programming, this inculcation. It's no wonder people go through decades, you know, knowing that there's anything even going on until they run into like a health crisis mm. and then they then they have they're forced to take another look you know but yeah. i see and then the people mind reaching in. sorry go ahead no i said then the mind is also convinced you know that you actually need all of this mm -hmm. that's the biggest problem that 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 the mind is convinced you yes. Know? That, yes that's the biggest so how can you make your mind you know, not believe that, that I, so you don't need it. Yeah. Right.
Uh, someone has a comment here about, uh, there was a few that I missed, but the last one says, I think freely is overdoing it, but fruit and a small amount of sugar is acceptable of the bo if the body feels energy depletion. And that's a huge subject, you know, it's something I've been studying a little bit more about lately, you know, because there's the whole thing of like, what food? are going to lead you to prana that's something that interests me something that i want to offer to the community like how can we that's something ellie tom talked about is eating your way to breatharianism right so there's like this high focus on you know fruitarianism and liquidarianism and, and liquid fruit juices and i i consume mostly liquid fruit juices but um you know the worry is that it's going to cause a a, a blood sugar spike and make your make your body not very good at um you know balancing insulin um but the anthrocy anthrocyanins in like berries and most fruit won't dump that much sugar into your blood and if you eat it with greens or juice greens or have some fiber you know like just a whole piece of fruit that will slow down this blood sugar down so and just similarly to like what i just was talking about just to respond to this comment you know there's as many ways uh, uh there's as many diets as there are human beings and as many ways to prana as there are human beings so i think we got to get out of this ideation of like everyone needs to eat like this you got to have your fats and your greens only and no sugar or it's all fruitarian and none of that other stuff or you know your body's wisdom will guide you. So, sorry, I just wanted to do that. Yeah, every car don't take the same fuel. So we are different. Right. It's, you know, once you know your body, you will know. Like I can go for a very long time on, on nothing or maybe some water. But um, how what I convinced myself would give me some energy it's you know when i go for a very long time i'll take a little bit of honey in water and i get the sugar through the honey mm -hmm. some wild honey but everybody's different right so and sugars are great for your brain your brain needs sugar you know but i mean to a point that's the thing about the breatharian lifestyle is learning that all of this is inside of you really um, they're finding more and more of the ways in which your body creates what it needs. For instance, um, uh, just in dry fasting, your body will make a, like a, a quart of water or two quarts of water, you know, just from breathing air and uh, the common combining of fat storage with air creates water in your body, you know. Mm, so. I believe that. I don't think we have to drink water all the time. I don't think we... Have we can absorb it through our skin. All the time. I really don't think so. Like, we, we are absorbing things through the air all the time. So, just to put something in the mouth or fill ourselves, it's just a habit. It says itself, it's just a habit, you know? But, um, as long as you believe uh, that uh, nutrition, so if you believe in the sugar level, or if you believe in whatever, is going to happen. That's what your body believes, and that's how your body's going to act up too. So, don't don't neglect that. Don't listen to your body because it's a different stages. You know when you're detoxing, so your, your body will give you different signs. Just listen to it. Just listen to it, and just go with the flow. Really. So eventually, like your body will let go of different things, and then you just gravitate towards what aligns with you. So the more you clean up, the more the right things will just fall into place and everything else will fall apart you know or fall away from you because this is just a learned habit that you know you've been conditioned since you were a little kid so just i'm learning that we shouldn't be complicating it with all this other concept just like you know whatever that makes you feel good like when you're drinking something does pineapple makes you feel good pineapples you know if you like you know self drink celery juice if you like whatever you like mm -hmm. just entertain that and see not even what you like what your mind is telling you but whatever that your body aligns with you know well Without i think there's room therapy. for both I, I i would say there's even room for both you know to go ahead and allow yourself that you know mm -hmm. like 
A lot of people say don't juice pineapple. You know, for instance, it's super high in sugar. You know, but it's also really it's high in it, it, But I it's think also, a lot of people need, you know, yeah. pineapple because yeah. it clears all that out. Like that's what I, I wouldn't be drinking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I wouldn't be drinking pineapple because it's too acidic for me. Yes. Because I don't need to detox as much as someone that eats cooked food or eats something else. So yeah. that acid would really like he's a vacuum kind of. So it would help you like you know mm. clean your colon. But as far as like Jerome, you are on um, liquid diet only, and if you've been drinking just clean stuff and your pipes are clean, there's no reason for you to drink anything that's acidic, because now like it's, it's kind of like it does something else damaging than clearing. But other yeah, people. Should on liquid diet too and i do a pineapple sometimes you know just because i like it like you said you know i think it's uh, uh as you were pointing out i think it's important to give equal sort of weight to body and mind you know like if your mind is like you know i'm i'm sick of green juice you don't mm -hmm. want to have another green, green juice you're not going to get the full product benefit mm -hmm. of that you know but if, if you go ahead and have that one you want you know like some i don't know papaya juice or, or something something wonderful and decadent then you're then you're not feeling like you're uh you know restricting yourself like we were talking about mm -hmm. earlier. No, absolutely not don't restrict yourself i'm just saying as far as the yeah. body yeah. you know like how the body Lit will affect it tanya and i have tested you know these acidic juices and how they affect me and her and mm -hmm. You know they they don't do anything good anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you put yeah. it that way. But um, yeah, yeah. So you eventually you will go into lighter and lighter. You have to dilute it and dilute it because of your system is clear. Mm -hmm. And you know, like that when you put like something that's so acidic, like if I drink pineapple, it really cuts my my tongue. Right? That's how acidic it is for me. Yeah. Me so too. it does the same thing on the inside. It does the same thing on the inside. So it's like how sensitive is your body and what is it that you want to detox and clear and when do you stop detoxing mm -hmm. is the question right nice. so is it different fruits i will go lighter and lighter you know the more detox you are yeah and the more you can incorporate greens that that almost surely helps with that whole detoxification you know mm -hmm. thing to open up the pathways you know to supply the proper nutrient Jerome yes. has been. Do you have anything to add, I, brother? I did. I mean, there's been several times, but I, I don't want to interrupt anybody. Yeah, yeah no. Drop your, drop your wisdom, brother. I, I don't want to interrupt anybody, but yeah, there's been light bulbs, light bulbs while you both have been talking the whole time. Um, one of the light bulbs was, you know, Nabiha's always, always saying the mind, the mind, the mind, you know? And. I remember years ago, I read this book called The Kabbalion. And The Kabbalion, I think it was one of the very first chapters. One of the, the hermetic principles was all is mental, all is mine. Mm -hmm. And when I was in Costa Rica, let me tell you, you know, I was living on liquids out there then, but there was one moment where I had this juice, I think it was like maybe a mango juice or a guava or you know, a sour sop juice or something. And I had it, it, it was a carton juice, but I didn't want to lug it everywhere. So I just dropped it next to this table, next to the hostel that I was staying at. I was staying at a hostel. And then I just walked around uh, Puerto Viejo. And I was walking up and down the road and I would walk to frequently, you know, on the La, Pl La Playa Negra, the beach. And then it was, Tanya was over there and then Fabi was over there and different people were there at the time. Mm -hmm. And I remember coming back and sure enough, it was in the same spot, but something, I, a thought came to me and I was like, wait a minute, did somebody move it? Like there was somebody that was sitting kind of nearby where I had hid the juice to come back and grab it. And I was like, wait, did, did somebody tamper with the juice? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. This thought just came, it was just a little little thought. Mm -hmm. And so I picked it up and I was like, nah, nah, I must be crazy, you know? And I took a sip and right when I took a sip, my mind, it was like, what if somebody did? <laughs> like, like, what if, like, what if somebody did? 
<laughs> mess with the juice. Like what, what, what if, you know? And the moment I'm telling you, the moment I got that thought, it was like my mind went into a full spiral, like a full blown, I had a full blown panic attack in the hostel. Mm. I felt like I was on a mushroom trip. I felt like I was hallucinating. My hand was growing and shrinking. My <laughs> breath was short. I was short of breath. I couldn't breathe. I was like, I don't even know. Like, I don't know anybody out here. I'm in Costa Rica. Where's the nearest hospital? Do I need help right now? Like, what's going on? <clears throat> For the next hour, I was on a full-blown trip, like a hallucinogenic, you know, overtaking a sip of juice that somebody may or may not have even found, you know? And my mind just sent me off for like a whole hour. And I was just, you know, just like, what, am I gonna die? You know, I was thinking, I didn't know what was gonna happen, but you know, here I am, you know, I made it through, but yeah, the mind is powerful. The mind is powerful. It, yeah. it is. It, it, the, I mean, that, that principle from the Kaibalian, that's what got me into her medicine hermeticism of the universe is mental because that's just what the buddha said right. you know even if we're just Life experiencing the world we experience it through our mind everything you know and our whole body is our, our mind isn't just you know up in here it's like all of your nerves it runs through the whole tree of your body mm -hmm. you know um so your every bit of sense awareness is information for your mind you know Right. And yeah. thoughts, uh, the Buddhists say that feelings follow thoughts, mm -hmm. you know. So if you think about, like, you, if you think about, like, cute kitties, like, you know, or whatever, you know, like, you have, like, the little fuzzy, warm, pink thought or whatever it is, you know. <laughs> but if you think about, I don't know, politics, you know, or what's going on in Palestine, you know, whatever, uh, then... It, you get different feelings, you know? So the trick is in to like, we can't control our, our thoughts. You ever try to control your thoughts? Like, um, like sit and meditate and make your thoughts go where you want them to go. I mean, to the extent you can, but you can't keep it, you know? But really? But they all flow, right? It's like a traffic, the traffic is always going. Yeah, you stop one car and hit the next. You create a. That, that's, that's the question I put to you guys and to everyone. You know who is thinking? Who is doing the thinking? And are those thoughts yours? Mm -hmm. And just because you, you had a thought, should you believe it? Mm -hmm. You know. Um, that's life. You know. <laughs> Do you believe yeah. in? <laughs> I don't think you can believe any of your thoughts. I think they're imaginary. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, you know, it's like, what is, you know? just like they want to no. say, like, what is real? Mm -hmm. I ask myself that question every day. It's mm -hmm. just like brushing my teeth. What is mm -hmm. real? But, but you can't practice thoughts. You know, we can't control it in that way. Yeah. That we create habits. You know, so if you create, if you practice loving thoughts, if you give love toward yourself, you know, all these little things start to shift, you know, like you said, that the moment you thought about was, oh, what if they, you know, put something in my drink, the shift, you know, that it makes, you know, um, and I think we can shift the whole, re shift timelines, shift reality. Absolutely. Yeah, that reminds but, me of when you wake up from a, you know, like a horrible dream, and you really believe in it, you feel it, you know, you can sense it, you're breathing, you know, hard and, you know, if somebody died or you died in a car crash or whatever you wake up from, you feel it until you realize it's a dream and all of that just goes away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. You know, when you suspect something and you think somebody put something in there, you really will feel the effect because it's all mine. And that's what we do every day. Whatever we believe, we get power. You know, so we have to choose wisely when it comes to what we believe in. But somehow, you know, in order to live and breathe, you have to believe in something. But th that's kind of like what keeps us going, what gives us, you know, that purpose. But we have to be careful with what we give power to, yeah. you know. And not to attach to our beliefs, to understand that this is something that can shift, you of know. Of course. That it's, not, 
that it's not concrete because that's where we get into pain and suffering, creating for ourselves pain and suffering and others when when we fix on this on an idea, a belief, and hold it to that's be true. true. That's true. You know? Yeah. 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 True. My sister asked me today what I believe in, and I told her I can't answer because I can change my mind tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You know, I can change my mind anytime about what I believe in. So, you know, do I give power to it? No. I believe in whatever's happening in this moment. I think that's, I mean, to me, that's the beauty that Buddhism has helped me with is like this acceptance of things as they are right now, you know, good or bad, you know, um, embrace it all with, you know, a fullness, you know, mm-hmm. don't run away from the things that are hard. Embrace that, you know, don't, uh, when someone comes with great energy and a loving hug and there's great vibes embrace that you know exactly when you when you're struggling embrace that when it's easy all embrace of it. all, all of it, it everything yes all of it it's it's different like if we didn't have all of that kind of fluctuation in our moment it would be so boring you know it's just that we want to cling on to whatever that feels good at the moment but all of it has its purpose so embrace it you know welcome it Right. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it too. Well, I hate to say it, family, but I'm going to have to wrap up. There's some questions coming in. Someone asked real quick, uh, just manifesting, asked Nabiha, when was your last solid food? I have no idea, actually. Yeah. I have no idea, but I don't, I'm not on anything strict, you know. I can chew and spit out stuff, you know. <laughs> I can be chewing my oranges. I do that. I, don't, I just don't want yeah. to that. Yeah. Just, so I just, spit just to out, taste so. something. Hmm? You know, I'll like just to taste something. I'll taste something, and then um, you know. Yeah, but yeah. as far as you know, putting something solid in front of me and eating, I can't think of doing it this year. I don't know about last year. Yeah. You forget after a while. It's just just part of the your daily. So, yeah. Yeah, I, like, I've never kept, I've never count anything, you know, even if I go on a fast or whatever. I normally, I would say, like when I come online and I talk about the mono diets and stuff, it's just, you know, I'm trying. But if it goes above those days or like, you know, less than those days, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Awesome. Now I can, yeah, sometimes I don't even remember last time I had juice. You know, <laughs> not, not even talk about <laughs> solid. Sometimes I don't even remember when I had juice last time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it depends on the on my mood and what and um, how you feel. That's the I think that's the best way I think for all of us. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Anything else you want to add, Jerome? Before we go. Oh, yeah. Just thank you. You know, thank you both just for for having these conversations, for having these talks you know, for just for putting it out into the wavelengths, you know, putting out the frequency, putting out the vibration and just putting out the energy, you know, there's so many people that are hungry just for this kind of energy, you know, hungry mm-hmm. to learn that they don't, that there are certain things that, that might be unnecessary. And it's like, people are really, they're really thirsty you know they really want to know and um yeah you don't you don't always you don't always realize like who you can affect by just speaking your truth being in your authenticity and yeah many people's lives are affected and it's so far reaching that you know they may never come back and tell you but it changed their lives you know i've had people come back and tell me wow you changed my life years ago i never told you but yeah. just one one thing you said just just did something, you know. And I know Nabiha, she always feels like she's not saying anything, you know. But but to somebody else, she's saying everything. You know? She's she says stuff to me all the time. Yeah. I need to hear, you know. And you too, brother. And it's we all. It reminds me of what Gandhi says: is you know what you do may seem insignificant, but it's significant that you do it, mm. you know. And uh. Because you don't, there's people are going to connect in with different people differently in the way it's shared, 
you know, and uh, the heart space around it, you know. So, you know, bless you both for just being my friends, for showing up. And it's been it's been wonderful as always. Look forward to our next time and have a beautiful week, family. Bye. Right. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Much love.